Hi there, I'm Fabian. Let's start by thinking about the future of intelligent systems, not just plugins or prompts, but fully autonomous agents. In today's architecture, a single user request might pass through a Salesforce agent, it might pass through a SAP automation agent, which may even call an M365 Copilot agent or plugin, which may invoke a custom agent or plugin that you have built. In this new agent-to-agent -agent world where everything is distributed and model context protocol or MCP world where communication and discovery is being standardized, possibly across tenants, possibly across clouds and even organizations, we need observability. Not just to troubleshoot, but to understand who did what, when they did it, why they did it, and what was the outcome. And that's what today's talk is going to be all about. Now, here we're going to walk through um, a couple of things. First, we're going to define the problem, the observability gap. And that really hits Gen AI um, solutions harder just by the fact that it is non-deterministic and is not like traditional apps. Then we're going to break down how systems and tools, for example, open telemetry in this case, can help both locally um, you know, with using Aspire on a Docker container and in the cloud using Azure Monitor, you know, through Azure Insights. We'll do a walkthrough and a demo. In fact, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to do a demo first so you can decide if you want to stake for the walkthrough of a real trace, you know, from prompt to plugin to result. And then, um, you know, we'll finish with a concrete steps that you can um, take to, um, to add Hotel, I struggle because of my accent. I don't mean H O T E L, I mean O T E L, which is, you know, um, open telemetry um, to, you know, inside your own plugin. Because if observability doesn't make your plugin better and faster to debug or easier you know, to trust, then we would not have fully done our jobs. So let me start with a little bit of a framing. Now, listening to our customers and partners um, and their challenges, and also talking with my colleagues at work. You know, I've come to the conclusion that we need to pay attention to this. So I spent a ton of time just even just thinking about this on my own. And, um, you, know, to, uh, you know, also doing my own experiments on sample codes uh, that I've built. And also I've been recently building community code and community projects, you know, one for a brewery and one also for a nonprofit that I help with. I, you know, I've really seen this to be somewhat profound because a lot of what I'm doing right now is totally agent to agent and also using MCP. Now, this might not be the only tool to do this job, and I've only spent around 48 hours both learning this tool, you know, experimenting, and now talking to you about it, um, but it is where, where I am right now. You know, so again, you know, building in the open that I love doing, I'm hoping to start a dialogue and share my knowledge journey with you, and we can certainly experiment together and learn together so that in this agentic world, we humans can actually see where we're going. So as again, you know, I love building in the open and I am I'm going to level up a solution that I already have out there already and using a feature that I just shipped called CAPS or Copilot Agent Plugins to demonstrate this in my demo today. Now I've cloned one of my samples as you can do as well and I've added open telemetry to it. And this can work, you know, for the basic CAPS call or agent group chat that I do with another CAPS solution or go totally agent to agent. And, um, you know, to, to get this code, you can actually go to um, go.fabswill.com slash CAPS. I'll put it somewhere inside the animation when I go into post edits. All right. So let's frame the problem. Um, it all comes down to the dev experience. You know, you can write a plugin or a solution and someone can run it in their own tooling or their own mobile app or in Copilot Studio or an agent builder and it could potentially fail. And there, you know, there's no real crash that you see, no real error message, you know, no log per se. It just doesn't work. It gives you, you know, some type of a cryptic message. Now, this is the silent fail that can really kill confidence in Gen AI systems. Um, and if we, you know, we, if we can't take a trace of what happened and we can't fix it, and then more importantly, we can't potentially trust it. So, you know, let me, um, you know, put a demo up front right now and actually show you that, and then we'll come back to this. So let's. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Let's now make this bigger. Okay. 
All right, so we're gonna grab this. We'll fix all of that in post edit. Control C. And we're gonna come over here and we're going to go to, where do I wanna go to? Yep. We're gonna go to here and let's kill that window. We don't want that one and we're gonna do Control V. All right, so you can see here that we actually have nothing in our structured logs as yet. If I go here, there's nothing. If I go to traces, there's nothing. If I go to metrics, there's nothing right now. All right, um, we'll come back to this one a little bit later. In fact, yeah, you know, we'll, that's the one in Azure. We'll get to that. All right, so we know that we're running. Let's come over to here now. And this is the solution that I have. We'll do a clear. You can see I was doing some work here before. We'll do dot net run. And let's move this up so we can actually see something. So we can actually see right now, it's loaded a bunch of these plugins that you can see here, the calendar plugin, the context plugin, the drive item plugin, the messages plugin, they're all loaded. And it's asking me for my prompt. But before we even go too far, um, let's come over here and take a look and let's actually come back to structured output and we can actually see that we have information coming back with traces that we can dig into. If I click into one of these traces here, it'll take me into the load plugin and it'll show me a bunch of stuff that's going on. But um, let's go ahead now and come over to even here actually and let's refresh this. This is on the Azure side. We'll get to how we get here in a, in a, in a few minutes. Um, but if we go down to logs, and we go to one of these history. Let's go ahead and go down to this one here and do a run. We can see the exact same thing over here on the Azure side. I don't, you know, well, time is a little bit off because of the UTC, but you can see this is all 517, which is basically today. And it's roughly the same thing that you see over here. All right. So with that done, let's come here now and do um, what can you tell me about my contact? Kaiser Soze. And if you've seen any of my demos before, you know this is um, a person that's inside Adel Vance's contact. Um, we're going to go through some things with her email inbox as well. But let's go ahead and do this. We What we expect to see now is that we were going to get, um, it's going to look for um, um, a, um, a token. It notices that there isn't a token and it's going to use device code auth. So I'm going to control C to get that. And I'm going to come over here now and under Adel, I'm going to do a control V and I am going to authenticate using Adel. So everything is running in the context of Adel right now. And now that I've authenticated, I'm going to come back over to here and I'm, you know, you can, act, you can see it acquired the token. And now it actually comes back and it gives me the information here about Kaiser Sose. Um, if I come inside a trace here, we can see that nice drill down of everything that we have done gone through you know the authentication um you know uh, realizing that there was nothing there then it gets the token here then it comes back and does the get here um you know we can drill down into that we can actually see it did it need a contacts and then in down here it does the chat completion to give you back the result that you're going to basically see right there um and it gives you all of this information here that you can actually view come into the logs here um, let's go back over to traces. Now we can actually see the same thing here again. Uh, I'm refresh. And if we come down to metrics here, we can and choose the, um, the, the, the item here. We can actually see a little bit of the information as well. Now, again, again, 48 hours in, not an expert at it, but, and there's a ton of reading that I have to do to figure this out. And if we come over to here as well, again, um, if we run this one more time, we'll see uh, more information. But what I have done is another, and by the way, I'm getting better at custo queries now, <laughs> something I didn't think I was going to basically say. But if we go here under, which is the one that has the custo query, this one right here, we can actually see the information coming back about Kaiser Associate and so on and so forth. Um, now I can actually come over here and oh, and you can see the results obviously here in terminal. Let's do something that's really cool. Let's say that um, what's in my um, what's the last e what is the last email in my inbox? Please summarize and send an email to Kaiser K Y. Soze with 
a subject subject of um, explain this to me to me FYSA and FYSA for your situational awareness um, uh, uh, with the summary as body all right so a couple things happening right here it doesn't know who kaiser sose is because they didn't give it an email but it should go figure that out so i expect it to basically call um the contacts plugin and then it's going to also call the send mail plugin so there's two plugins in one in one other and we can actually see that it was done here um already and let's come over to here now and actually go back to where is that thing at? yeah here um and then let's go to uh, the structured logs first of all and we can see here um that it uh, let's see let's see let's see uh total acquired silently completed um, let's go to the traces actually refresh this uh, look at the time okay What's going on here? Something better. Refresh. Metrics. No, that's not what I want to see. Uh, here it is. Okay, so if I come here and do and look, so the post is that. So the get has to be basically um, me dot messages to find out what's going on. And then we have um, a chat completion. Then we have a send mail right here and also a chat completion. So we basically get the, the prompt goes in. Um, it calls the meetup messages. Um, it knows who Kaiser Sosa is already because of the memory, um, because of the email, and it, is, it does a send mail. So it does both the reading of the email, the sending of the email, and knows who um, Kaiser Sosa is to basically send that back. So that's it for the demo. Um, let's go back and talk a little bit now about how this is all wired together. So we'll come here and um, we will start from current. All right, okay, cool. All right, so here we go, all right. So um, we defined the problem already as the fact that if you have no plugins, um, you're not going to have inability to, to trace and debugging is going to be blind. And we did the demo. All right. So the idea is that, you know, the answer isn't just to add more, um, you know, print statements as I usually do in mine, you know, console the right line. Um, it's using tools in this case, like open telemetry and open standard for capturing everything from logs to spans to metrics, whether you're working locally um, as you saw in the Aspire dashboard, or pushing data to the um, Azure Application Insights, you can um, get consistent, structured, and also queryable observability um, with the custom queries that you saw me doing there before, or you know, in, in that experiment. And it's all instrumented directly from your application, as you can see in this semantic kernel um, you know, example. Now, there, um, there are going to be like three dimensions that I found out already. You know, logs that you can see when I was in the structured logs that tell us what had happened. You know, your plugin was invoked, a token was missing, um, or it was responded in terms of silently. Um, you can see all of the warnings plus all of the errors. You can get traces that now show us when and where it happened and how long it took from one part to go to the other, which is important if you want to test things like latency. Um, and which plugins were involved and which one was called and which services were also called because we saw it move from the login service um, to the plugin, um, to OpenAI, to Graph, and you saw all of that in terms of the entire stream itself. And metrics, which tells us, you know, how often, you know, what was spiking, when it was spiking, what's trending, what's failing. And together, they really give us a full end-to-end -end picture, you know, observability, for lack of a better word, and not just logging. Now you don't need to ship code to Azure, you know, you know, to start tracing. As you can see, there was two um, tabs that I had open. One was local, that's running on Docker, and one was application insights. With Inspire running locally and Docker, you can have a live dashboard that shows the logs, the spans, and the real-time metrics as you build. You can send the prompt and you can literally watch it flow. I think in one example, you saw as soon as I press enter and I move back over, the, you know, it came immediately there right afterwards. And this is where exactly trust starts to begin inside that dev loop where you as a developer have control. 
Now, when we double click, we always can get into traces, as you can see here. And also, you know, can also see detail in terms of the metrics. There's a ton here, and there's a ton I don't know, and there's a lot that I know I <laughs> there's a lot that I know I don't know. So I need to go figure out. So um, I wanted to pause and, and show. You saw a little bit of this one. I uh, I um I did my prompt before, but you know, in the real example, there's a, now that we can spend a little bit more time, we send a prompt in, and the plugin. Um, talks to Microsoft Graph, but behind the scenes, the trace really shows the authentication flow. Um, it shows the token retrieval. It calls the endpoints, and it shows and displays the res um, you know, the payload. You can even tag spans with plugin names and user IDs or trace IDs, and you can really wire down and double click into that, um, you know, to get that type of granularity. And who benefits? You know, it isn't just for you, the developer, but product teams. Um, even here at Microsoft, you know, we're interested in this. I mean, we want to know things, especially around latency and around. Um, uh, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> um, to make sure that things are working, they're supposed to. There's a word for that. Um, you know, in giving you the accurate information. Um, clarity is well, I guess, one of them. Um, and uh, but also your own teams as you're building these distributed systems that are hooking into other systems, you may want to know how things are going inside your own system as it works with other um, tooling as well. Third party devs may want to get feedback loops um, for faster debugging, and this certainly gives you that. Now, there are other tools out there that I know that do this all up, but this is something that you can get that's open source and it is for free, and you can start to go you know, get cracking. And platform operators that you know, care about the reliability, service level agreements, and alerts, observability empowers everyone at every role. So what do I want from you? If you want to build Gen AI agents and plugins that are really production ready, trustworthy, and debuggable, start with observability. Um, you know, in fact, I take it a step further, and something I didn't talk about here, but start with evals so that you can understand your expected outcome and then build in observability in order to test that outcome all right and test also the performance of that outcome add telemetry tools like open telemetry use aspire for local feedback and use azure for something that is more production ready it gives you a lot more details as well i was surprised to see you know it, it had my ip address where i'm located a ton of different stuff um, but all above basically i want you to build with confidence that's it in a nutshell thank you for listening have a great day